Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again, here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another video leading up to the second half of The Walking Dead Season 8. In this one first, we're going to give our thoughts on which of our original Walking Dead Season 1 survivors do we think will be killed off next. And spoiler the warning, as per usual, if you guys are not cut up for The Walking Dead, which is up to the mid-season finale for The Walking Dead Season 8. So I thought this was a great question to start this uh, Q&A uh, with you guys uh, for, which is which of our original Season 1 Walking Dead survivors do we think will be killed off next? And I thought it'd be fun to kind of try to guess the order of what order we think they'll be killed off. So the Season 1 survivors, because there's not that many left. When you look at it, you have uh, Rick... Of course, because Carl, Carl's dead now. So, uh, Rick, uh, Carol, Daryl, and Morgan. And I think that's all of them. I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying to think, because like, it feels like there's got to be more than that. <laughs> but literally, that would make four. And then if they do go ahead with killing Morgan off this season, because he says he doesn't die and everything, so, so we're going to have to see how that goes. Uh, but if they do, in fact, kill Morgan off this season, we'd be left with three. That's it. Uh, which is, I mean, that is a very small amount of surviving characters from the first season. When you really think about it, and you think about shows that are unpredictable, I mean, what we just saw recently was one of the most unpredictable things you would ever want to see in a TV series. I mean... That was really crazy, and pretty much nobody saw it coming aside from, you know, spoilers. I mean, you wouldn't, you know, that's kind of part of the thing, you know. You wouldn't see it coming, um, you know. It's just one of those crazy ones. So in terms of the order next, so I think, you know, Morgan is crossing over into fear, so we're going to have to see how that goes and whether or not it ends up being a death for Morgan in the second half of Season 8 or whether or not it ends up being something where he decides to leave the group and then he ends up in fear and helps uh, with that show uh, for who knows how long that would be. It could be maybe a season, a couple seasons, maybe even longer than that. We'll have to see what they decide to do with... Um with Fear of the Walking Dead and just how that uh, how that goes. So for me, I would think I will put Morgan as next for me. Uh, and again, I could be totally wrong with this one because if they do a prequel crossover uh, for Morgan to go to Fear, you know, and leave the original series uh, by his own uh, will, let's say, uh, which you know would not be out of character for him. I guess it makes sense. He would still be my first to be killed off next in terms of this list. So that leaves you with a three. I would say like the big three, but um, you have of course you have Rick, Carol, and Daryl. So out of the three of them, I think that, um, you know, this is a really interesting one, right? Because you have, um, out of the three of them, you, you would have thought probably that Rick would survive on the longest. You would think that, right? Uh, but at this point, I'm almost thinking like with his contract, with Andrew Lincoln's contract starting to run up, and, you know, the amount of seasons the show has been on for, he obviously has probably worked harder than anybody during this time. I'm sure, you know, obviously uh, Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride have worked extremely hard in the series as well, too. Same with Lenny James. Uh, but, of course, Rick, I think, has the most screen time of anybody because, well, it's, it's Rick. He's your lead. So we're going to have to see what happens with this. But I would not be surprised if you had one of the two. I think one of those two would be killed off before Rick. So Rick would be the middleman out of the three. And then one of them might actually survive on longer than Rick. Um... And I actually think, as strange as it might be, I think Carol might actually end up being the longest survivor out of any of the original characters, which, like, that, that's how I'm feeling right now, because I'm thinking, like, here's what I'm thinking, all right? So let's say Morgan is killed off, so you're left with those three. Um, then you go, maybe you go Daryl first, you know, maybe you kill Daryl off in season 10 or something, you know, something like that, uh, because it's just, you know, I mean, it's what it is, right? You know, you got, he's, he's always right in there in the, in the, uh, the firing line. He's always, he's always in it. And, um, you know, eventually he's in harm's way a lot. So he's had quite a few chances already. He's got one of his wings clipped at this point. And, uh, the other one, I mean, we could, we could see that, right? I think that that makes sense. Then you have Rick, um, as well, who eventually Andrew Lincoln's probably going to want to leave the show if it's after season twelve or eleven or some of that. That'd be fine, you know. I'd be happy with that if that's what he if that's what he wanted to do at that point. Uh, it'd be great if he'd stay on longer, but you know, again, twelve years is a big ask, guys. For us to ask fifteen years, I don't know if we could really even even do that. You know, that'd pretty much take up majority. I would think majority of his career, and we don't really know if he'd be acting or doing much more after that, just because the amount of work and years and everything he may not even want to after that. You know, I have to see. But I would not be surprised if they did you know rick at some point and then you had carol kind of like as a background you know because she's not again she's she's you know big in the show but she's not like 
I would say Rick or Daryl, where they're always at the forefront. You know, they've kind of made her that a little bit. She's had a lot of the action stuff, like No Sanctuary, and then later on. But she's also had kind of the storylines where she doesn't want to fight so much. She wants to kind of relax a bit. She uh, bakes cookies and she does other things like this, and she kind of goes off on her own for a while and kind of stays out of harm's way during that time. So I would not be surprised if. Out of all those original survivors from the very first season, Carol might kind of end up being like, you know, going to the background somewhere here to where she just comes out every once in a while and you kind of see her. But so she's there, but she's like not always at the forefront there. And as a result, you see her just kind of uh, somehow managed to outlive everybody. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So my order, and this is all speculation, guys. There's no right or wrong answers here, right? You know, you could have said, well, there's no way they'll kill uh, Carl off. And that's what, you know, we all said before that. So you never know. But I'd go first would be Morgan, I think. And then probably Daryl, and then maybe Rick, and then maybe Carol would be the one to like survive, you know, like all the way through. If uh, if the show ends up ending, you know, you, they just never kill Carol off, like because I don't think you get anything from it. Like if you kill Carol off, it's going to be like one of those. It's like killing off the mom of The Walking Dead, right? So it's like she's sacred. You, you see what I'm saying with this? Like she's like you can't do it. You see what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> you can kill Rick off. That's enough of a shake as it is, right? But. To, to, to kill her off is like, you know, I mean, you piss enough people off with Carl. You don't want to add the Owen there and make it Carol too, right? So you, you push her back and then you have her survival. So that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, write your comments below, guys. What's your order? Out of the original survivors, which ones are going to survive the longest? Or do you think that they're all going to survive out the series? Except for maybe Morgan or something. Let me know what you guys think. Fun one to try and speculate. Long term, you know, I'm not expecting any of these to be killed off. Except for Morgan in the next year or so. Uh, I think uh, they might do like a big one. Like I always thought Daryl made sense for like a season 10. You know, it's like, oh, it's season 10. Daryl's dead, you know, <laughs> something like that, you know, I don't know, I'm just not sure. There's also an interview uh, with Chandler Riggs that you guys can check out. It was at uh, Walker Stalker Con. I'll put the link in the description so you guys can watch it through. Uh, it's pretty cool, he's cut his hair and that kind of stuff, so there's uh, some, there's that. And uh, you can check it out, and you know, it's just kind of, they ask him some questions about uh, just some different things, stuff with the holidays and other things about, uh, about Carl and about why he's decided to do uh, you know, go the humanitarian uh, approach and try not to see that everybody's not evil and that. So you can kind of hear it in his own words. I don't want to repeat what he says. Just watch that video and you'll get a, uh, a good understanding. It's pretty cool to check out because you just kind of get to see... Um, you know, him answer a few different questions uh, after the, uh, I wish it would be a bit longer, but uh, what can you do? It's a Walker Stalker Con, so you got an audience there and that whole thing. So, uh, but you know, it's pretty cool just to kind of hear him kind of touch base with the audience after uh, the death of Carl. So that that's pretty neat. So check that one out. And uh, next one will be from um, uh, AJ uh, Keyshawn, who says, uh, throwback review for Still Trev, LMAO, just kidding, man. Don't want to torture you. So you guys want to see a throwback review for Still. Actually, that was the most requested throwback review uh, episode. You know? <laughs> it's like the worst. That's the like worst episode of The Walking Dead ever. Honestly, it really is. You know, it's it's the worst of the worst. So maybe one day on April Fools, I'll do a throwback. Uh, that'll be April Fools joke, right? To do a throwback review for uh, for Still. That's funny. So uh, maybe I'll do that. Uh, and if you guys didn't see it, I did a throwback review for Clear on uh, Sunday, and. Um, you know, I'm open to doing some others as well, too, but you guys got to let me know which episodes you think and why. Like, why you want to see a, a, a throwback review to a particular episode. Eventually, I'll probably do the Season 7 premiere at some point, but it's probably too soon still. We might do that in a couple years or something like that. Uh, Andrew Ortiz says, I actually understand why Carl was killed off. In the comics, there was really no reason for Rick to keep Negan alive. Uh, the corny... Uh, the corny were better than him stuff. Uh, oh, right, yeah. So the corny were better than he is, uh, isn't cutting it, and wouldn't really work on a TV show. Something that would have been more impactful would be his son telling his father that people could change to show mercy and saying to keep Negan alive and uh, for all of us to live in peace as Carl dies so that Rick, uh, so that gives Rick the reason to keep Negan alive and try to make a better world and taking people in. Um, also, it didn't make sense for Rick to... Uh, okay, so he goes into a little bit of stuff of the comics, which is a little bit spoilery, so I'll kind of skip over it here. Um, also, Chandler's acting ability wasn't good, and he doesn't fit badass comic uh, Carl. Uh, I'm sure people on the show saw this. Uh, there is... Uh, there, are, there are ways to make this work. Uh, I like the idea of Ben's little brother being adopted by Rick and 
being with him during the uh, big time skip after the war and play Carl's Ark from the comics. So that was uh, one from yeah Andrew Ortiz put that one through. So it's a good it's a good comment. I do like it. Um, so for the first part, you know, you could definitely see reasons why. You know, you might want to kill someone like Carl off. I mean, the things it does for the show, it does do quite a bit for the show because it creates a sense of unpredictability. You're not sure who's going to survive. You're not sure how long. It's very exciting. Um, a lot of people didn't like Chandler Riggs, uh, not his acting ability, but just that role for him. Like, as he kind of grew up, it seems like he's not really, he doesn't really fit in with that role so much, right? It's kind of like the crazy, scarred, badass Carl. Um, you know, he did, I think he did it okay, but I guess a lot of people just really, really didn't like it. So there's that, and then of course as well too, you could, you could just replace it with somebody else. So, uh, yeah, you know, it also makes season eight, like it's a huge character death in season eight. So if nothing else, if All Out War ends, I don't think anybody's going to be upset because there's no major character deaths. Maybe they felt like they have to have at least one huge one, and maybe that's it. And so maybe they won't kill Morgan off. I don't know. I always thought they would. But it is true that killing off two season one characters in the same season feels like uh, overkill. Don't you guys? Like, at this point, you know, not that you could do it in season two or season three or season four because it's early. But now we're in season eight, and you're going to kill off two of your first season characters when you only have, like, you know, uh, like five left at that point. Now you have four You'd be down to three if you did that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. So we'll see what happens with Morgan. Maybe they will do the huge time skip for Fear Forward. I just thought it made more sense to do it the other way. You kill Morgan, you have to do a prequel, something like that. I think that makes sense better. But we'll see what they actually end up uh, end up doing. Uh, Resident Flea said, what a shitty ending. Come on, Trev. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't know how it would have felt with the Walking Dead midseason finale, um, how people would have felt if it wasn't spoiled for a lot of us, like how the average viewer would have uh, would have been impacted by that. And I haven't talked to too many people who aren't online. You know, I'd have to ask some people that uh, that, that maybe uh, watch the show that don't don't go online at all, because then they wouldn't know, have known that we were going to see that. But because it was spoiled so early, like before this half even started, it was spoiled, which is something that I really wish AMC could figure out a way to keep a lid on this kind of stuff so that it doesn't get that it doesn't get out. I mean, it's okay to kind of have have some general idea I think but when you have specifics to where you know like this is going to happen this is going to happen this you know and it's just like leaked right down to it and then it's it's posted in a message it's not as epic you know when people actually watch it as if they don't know so I really I blame AMC for letting info like that out really because once it gets out people are going to tell each other that's natural but uh, yeah I do blame them for for not keeping it under wraps is better than they could. I mean, you got to keep some of the stuff. You can't let everything, every death leak out. You know, where's the impact? You know, I, Game of Thrones is pretty good about that. They almost never have leaks. I mean, sometimes they do. But most of the time, you know, you don't know when they're going to kill somebody off big in Game of Thrones. You really don't. And uh, there's even spoilers for that, but they don't get most of the stuff. Most of the stuff is fresh. You don't know. And that really adds to, I think, the uh, the excitement for it, for sure. Um, and then uh, 21 All Programming Sports says, uh, Trav, please don't leave us uh, if The Walking Dead is over. <laughs> so uh, with all the talk of the videos lately and The Walking Dead maybe only going for another few seasons, um, don't worry, guys. You know, I plan on doing YouTube for a very long time, even past Walking Dead. You know, I have uh, been on YouTube for other series to end before. Breaking Bad was a big one where I made tons of videos for Breaking Bad. I reviewed like every episode for years, um, you know, at least for a couple years. Uh, there at the end, I think it was like last three seasons or so, and I made lots of videos on it, and then the show ended. And, uh, you know, I just kept going. I just pick up other shows and just go forward. Um, you know, Walking Dead is my favorite series ever, so I, I might not make as many videos when The Walking Dead eventually ends, but I will try to find other shows and other things that uh, that can satisfy. Because Game of Thrones is ending next year too, right? So Game of Thrones ends. You know, we're going to try to find some other stuff to, to cover. And, uh, you know, it's it's not always easy. But, um, you know, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best for you. So don't worry, guys, when The Walking Dead ends. Uh, my channel hopefully won't be dead. It'll be dead 100%. DV says, Trav, what was the point of bringing back the Junkyard group in The Walking Dead if they ultimately did nothing? It's just repeating the old material, isn't it? Thanks, bro. Um, so... That is true that them bringing back the uh, the junkyard group in the first half season of The Walking Dead did not really affect anything, you know, in terms of, like, the battle. Like, they didn't really... They went with Rick to the sanctuary, but then they didn't stay with him after when he went back to Alexandria. So they could have helped a lot, and they didn't. Um, so uh, they helped a little bit. It looked like they were going in, but uh, they take, they don't bother. So I guess it's within character for them to kind of be like, okay, we'll do it, and then kind of go back on it again. That's kind of how they are, right? Um... 
you know, even if they agree to something, they're not always trustworthy and they're not always in it 100%, whatever it happens to be. So uh, with them, it's kind of like I look forward to seeing more from them in the second half and also whose side will they be on is interesting too. I think they will help Rick and the others out and ultimately maybe become allies with the joint uh, surviving communities against the saviors because right now it really seems like as many saviors as the survivors have killed down, they, it still seems like they have more saviors than survivors. Like it, it seems like Negan still has the upper hand as far as manpower goes, which is really strange because Rick and the others, it seems like they've just wiped out so many of them uh, or captured, imprisoned a lot of them that um, it's kind of crazy to think that they, um, you know, at this point, they still have a, a good amount of numbers. It's just, it's really, really strange. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but I would expect maybe Oceanside, maybe the Scavengers to join with them as well too. Even the playing field and us to see a pretty epic conclusion to All Out War at the end of this uh, season. Um, and then uh, Storm Shadow will be asking the last one for this video, and it is Q&A Trev. Uh, do any of the C Season 8 episodes make your top 10? So that's a really good question. Do any of the Season 8 uh, episodes from the first half make my top 10 list? Certainly the mid-season finale, I'd say, doesn't. Um, <coughs> some of the other ones, like Morales returning in Episode 2, that was sweet. You know, That was pretty awesome. Uh, so that one's close to it. But the thing is, they've done so many episodes now. They've done like 100 episodes. And I can't say that any of the first seasons, uh, the first half of this season, um, any of those episodes were like top 10 worthy. What do you guys think about that? Like, were any of them that special that they should be in the top 10? You know, I don't know, man. Like, the premiere was pretty good. The second episode might be my favorite, just because they brought Morales back at the end. <laughs> the faces and everything. That was pretty That was pretty goddamn wicked. But I don't know, cause, because it's kind of like a jokey thing to bring Morales back and that kind of stuff. And it's kind of... It, it was badass, too. Uh, and then the third episode as well, also. A lot of action, a lot of craziness. I, like, I feel like I want to say maybe, but then when I think about it, it's like, no. If any of them deserve to be in the top ten, you would know it right away. Because there's been so many special episodes of The Walking Dead that if there was one that came out that was really special, we would probably know it instantly. Like, we would know it right away that this episode has to be a top ten episode, right? It's got to be one of those. And I don't think we really saw any of those this half. We saw a lot of amazing action in the first four episodes and some really great stuff. Um... But I wouldn't say that we saw anything that would top some of those top ten episodes like, you know, uh, geez, I don't know, man, uh, Better Angels and No Sanctuary and Too Far Gone. Like, you know, we got to wait till we see the final battle between Rick and Negan. When we see that, this uh, back half, I think that might be one of the top episodes, the final battle, the final epic uh, battle between the two of them in the war. Um, but I don't think any of the first half ones I would put on the list for Furry Storm Shadow. Sorry about that, man, but that's just... I just that's how I'm feeling right now. It's like they, they've done so many, man. It's hard to like put any of these ahead of all the other ones they've done that are in the top ten that really, really are great episodes. So that'll be it for today's Q and A, guys. So if you like the video, please don't forget to thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, and if you're new and you want to subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. And you can do it. You can subscribe at the bottom. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again soon for another video. As always, it's Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.